Welcome back as we continue WKBN Special Fair Play, a conversation about sports and race. There may be no better expert on this topic than our own Jim Trestle. Before he was Youngstown State's president, he coached the Penguins football team, then Ohio State's football team. I talked with him recently. Your father was a legendary football coach in the state of Ohio. Um, how did he deal with racism? Well, Stan, I'm going to take my mask off since we're over 10 feet apart. Uh, but thanks for wearing it on campus because you know that's an important thing here on our campus. But I do recall uh, there in the late 60s when I was in junior high, I was a little more aware and there was the college unrest. And I know my dad had uh, African-American players, white players. Uh, you know, he had people from all over the country and so forth, uh, all different backgrounds and religions and everything else. And, and, and so I remember, uh, him spending time, you know, with uh, the students, the student athletes, and so forth, and and uh, wanting uh, to be there and hear concerns, wanting to be, um, you know, a voice of reason, but also a voice of understanding that you know what he didn't understand. When you were a coach, were you cognizant that you had white players from? the suburbs or a more upscale neighborhood mixed with black players, maybe from the other city, and, and you had to mesh these two different social settings together into one. Did it even play into your thinking at all? You know, not so much from a socioeconomic standpoint, but from a racial standpoint, yes. It did? Oh, absolutely. In fact, we, we worked extremely hard on intentional activities for people of different races, different geographic locations, different backgrounds, different beliefs, to spend time together. Because what we believed and what we found was true was if you spend time with someone else that might not look like you or might not think like you or act might like not you. act like you or believe like you, um, you're going to grow to appreciate them because you'll find out that you're more similar than you are dissimilar. And so whether it was rooming during preseason, rooming on the road, uh, group projects that we might have, we might read a book as a team and we might strategically put some people together who came from a different direction to our campus. Uh, we absolutely uh, were cognizant. I think you do have to intentionally go out of your way to let people know that you care about every one of them and sometimes you have to go an extra mile because you do look different or you do have different backgrounds. Uh, that's the beauty of sport. In fact, I was just talking with Damon Williams, who's one of the great writers on diversity, equity and inclusion in college campuses throughout the nation. And, and he said the advantage athletics has that maybe the general student body doesn't have is they have some rituals. They have the ritual of preseason and you're all suffering. They have the ritual of the game and you're all either gonna have a high or a low. They have the ritual of the banquet. You have the ritual of road trips. You have the ritual of locker rooms. Whereas you can intentionally create ways for people to grow to understand and appreciate and get to know one another. Did you deal with racism as a coach? Did, you, did somebody ever come to you and say, he called me this, he called me that, racist issues? You know, I don't remember any real, um, any, any real shocking one, but you could see occasional ones, but it would be just like if you heard someone using terrible language in the locker room, you correct them. Or someone, you know, maybe looking sideways at another one or, or whatever, you, it, it gave you that moment to say, hey, you know, and it gave you that moment to say, hey, you know what, those two guys need to room together on the road next week. Uh, so I don't think any overt, over you know, the over the top nasty. Yeah, I, I think our youth today have a greater awareness and a greater appreciation and really a greater desire to learn about others not like them than there was 35 years ago. I think it's, my hope is, you know, we always talk about, well, what's this world gonna look like when my grandkids are my age? 
I hope what it looks like is that no one even has to discuss racism because that's not even in anyone's thought process, that they look at every human being uh, as someone that ought to be respected and appreciated and that they would want to get to know more about. And, and it's not even in the discussion. Uh, and, and I think just the way our youth think today, I think we have a chance to get there. Not there yet. Need to intentionally work harder to get there. Um, but I think we can get there. The youth are more open-minded than the adults? I would say so. Uh, they have less numbers of years of experiences and their experiences are broader. You know, they've seen, they've been around other people a little bit more. It's a more diverse world we live in. You know, we didn't have international students when I was in college. Either did we. Yeah. Two or three. Yeah, right. Uh, but today our, our, our youth get a chance, and not only to be physically around them, with the world of social media and multimedia and, and the way movies are today, and, and that it's just so much more of a blended world that I think that's the world that our youth are growing up in. And unless we teach them improperly, if we start teaching them to think there's differences, then we've got a problem. But if we let them grow and learn and experience on their own, I think we've got a good future in terms of racism in our, in our country and in our world. Coach Tressel, President Tressel, thanks. thanks. Racism is a topic that goes beyond sports and WKVN's coverage on race, sports and community will continue on our newscast and online. If you have a story or an idea for a story, just tap the reported feature on the WKBN app. For Dee Crawford and Ryan Allison, I'm Stan Boney. Thanks for joining us. Have a nice evening.